Very good. So describe what you see. So this is the Asherman syndrome. Do you see that? So I think we've answered this. This was the last but one question. You remember? Right? Yes. Then move yes. on. So look at this. So if you see the describe what you see, of course, you can see what this is a picture of what an HSG where the uterus has been what, outlined with no filling defects, but the right tube is gone. Okay. What is your diagnosis? You see that there is what the left tube is actually what visual uh, visualized with peritoneal spillage of the radio radio pig dye. Can you see that? Yes. So here, what do you think your 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 uh, diagnosis is? It's actually a what? A right sided what? Tubal blockage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. From what? A PID, a sarcoidiasis, right? Yes. Yes. Good. So, can it also be the same ashamas depending on the no, vaginate? No, it can't be ashamas. Look at, I said ashamas, there has to be what? You try and sign the key. There is no filling defect here. Okay. There is no filling defect here. So please don't write. See that the uterus has been what's outlined. There is no, it means that so there is no scarring in the uterus. Okay. Okay. So how will this patient present acutely? They are actually asking for what? The presentation of the PID, isn't it? So the patient will okay. present with pelvic pain. So we've done PID, MCQ takers, we've done it before, OSCE takers, I know you are familiar, pelvic pain, fever, uh, abnormal vaginal discharge or malodorous discharge, okay? Abnormal vaginal discharge. Okay? And there can actually be what? A history of what? A prior a STI, a, a vaginal procedure, like a DNC and all that, okay? Or an evacuation of the uterus. And for the for the uh, examination, the patient to be fair brow. They can be what? Pelvic tenderness. Okay. And then cervical motion tenderness is positive. What is the name of this sign called? It's an old fashioned name. What is it called? Sandelier sign. Okay. Sandelier's sign. Okay, so we uh, we have a video on this. Fortunately, all of you are on the same portal. So if you want to go back and then read on, I mean, revise on the PID, there is a, a, a video on the OBGYN portal. Okay. Is that okay? Good. Very good. So have you taken note of this? Yes. So can I clean? Yes. Good. As for questions four and five, we've answered it already, right? So there's no need to. So if you want, please go. So identify this investigation. Of course, this is what uh, an HSG. So this is a hysterosarpicogram. Please write in full. Describe what you see. So here you can see what. Actually, there's no feeling effect. Forget about this. It, it, it's an artifact, okay? It is a normal HSG. So you can see the radio peak dye actually demarcating the uterus cavity okay, without any feeling defects. And here you can see that the, both the right and then the left uterine tubes are all what visualized with peritoneal spillage, free per peritoneal spillage of the what? Of the dye. So it means that it indicates that the tubes are what? Patent, isn't it? So this is a normal yes, HSG. We have talked about the indications in the first video. We've talked about the complications. And then name one imaging modality that can be used in place of this. We spoke about what? The saline sono uh, hysterogram, isn't it? Yes. In our previous discussion. Look at it. It's there. Okay, so please turn off your video if you've just joined. Turn it off. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Good. 
So comment on this picture. We've already done that. That is what a picture of the uterus showing what the multiple anechoic uh, lesions indicative of, of the honeycomb appearance, right? Or the um the how do you call it? Snowstorm appearance. So the diagnosis was complete molar pregnancy. What is that? What underlying abnormality gave rise to this? Remember, we said that you had what? An empty ovum. By an empty ovum, we mean that an ovum without an active nuclear material, which was fertilized by one egg, sorry, one sperm, and then that sperm eventually duplicated into two. And so, cause that, or an empty ovum, which was fertilized by two separate sperms. Remember, how this patient presents. So, this one, I don't, I don't think we spoke about it. So, we said that the patient will present with what? Um, UPT positive, or she's what? Amenorrheic. She's known to be pregnant. And then she has what? First trimester, first trimester vaginal bleeding. Containing what? Vesicles. Please, this should come. Vesicles. Like grapefruits. It should come. What? investigations would you order for in the management? Remember, we spoke about this, isn't it? All right. Can I move on? So here yes. to um, identify the abnormality here. So that's a snowstorm appearance, diagnosis, complete molar pregnancy, the complications. Remember, we spoke about anemia. We spoke, in fact, we answered it. Three other forms of the condition. I don't think we spoke about this. What are the three other forms of gestational trophoblastic disease? Yes. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Invasive mole, right? Mm -hmm. What else? Placental site trophoblastic tumor, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What else? And then the molar pregnancy. No, please. Partial, partial, partial molar pregnancy. So because this is an three, Yes, three okay. other forms. Okay. Partial molar pregnancy, and of course, uh, chorio carcinoma, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, invasive mole, partial molar pregnancy, complete molar pregnancy, placental site trophoblastic tumor. Stephanie, are you here? Bossman, and I'm in I'm here, though. Hmm. Nanama, are you here? Yes, Doc, I'm here. Good, good. So what is the evacuation procedure of choice here? Yes. Suction and curettage. Suction curettage, please. Suction curettage. So the curettage is not manual. You're actually suction. So suction, not suction end. Suction curettage. All right. Good. So we're almost done. So this is another one. So I've identified the abnormality here. We've talked about it. What's your diagnosis? We've spoken about it. Um, what investigation? So the follow-up measures. I think this one, I brought it again because I wanted to talk about the follow-up measures. But fortunately for us, we've already discussed it, isn't it? So we would move on. Um, Doc, you see these files are on the um uh, I think it, it, it was when you were not here. We, we've discussed it. When you go to the unmanned OSCE station, they've been uploaded already, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, yes. So, um, I think this is what we, we, we discussed. So, describe what you see. What's your diagnosis? Same thing you could have. Four risk factors and then two indications for non-surgical management. All right. Um, please hold on. Good. So, I think here, what I wanted to highlight is the question two. Because we've discussed questions three, four, and one, isn't it? So, what are the three levels of pelvic organ support according to the Delancey classification? Who has heard of the um, Delancey classification before? Or who has read it before? Well, I think I have seen it in the SMS before, but I didn't think. Smart, many more discussion. Many are brew. Sometimes when I'm there and I'm preparing your questions, I just have to sit down and think. When you were in second clinical, what questions were they bothering you with? 
what questions were Ali Samba, Prof. Incheche, uh, Prof. Pong, Prof. Bayou, failure, uh, the failure to thrive and all that. What were they bothering you with? And I just bring it. Once I remember, I, I keep it in record so that once I remember, because I can't remember everything. Everything I talk about, please take it seriously. As some of you may have seen already. So the three levels of the Delancey classification, we have level one, okay? Level one, we have level two, okay? And then we have level three. Level one is sometimes called the upper level. So this is the Delancey's classification of what? Pelvic organ support. Level two is called also called the middle level. Level three is the lower level. Excellent. So which which support is at level one? The support at level one is actually the main support. That is the what? The cardinal or the uterosacral ligament. Uterosacral ligament. So we'll go and look at pictures and I think that will end it. Okay. So cardinal or the uterosacral ligament. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Then level two, we have the Pubo cervical fascia. And does it make sense? Where do you think this will be? Do you think it will be anterior or posterior? Pubo cervical fascia. What do you think? Because the pubic bone is here, right? And then the, the bladder is here. Then the uterus is here, isn't it? Then the um, rectum. So if the pubic bone is here, you see that the cervix is here, right? So the fascia which joins this is what they are talking about. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Board of directors, do you see that? Yes, sir. So that would be what? Anterior. MCQ tickets should please take note. Then we have the rectovaginal fascia. Where do you think that will be? Was the rectum, isn't it? So the vagina is here, so like that. Yeah. So rectal vaginal fascia. That is holding it at the second level posteriorly. So the uppermost level is actually the what? The uterosacral. But as you go down, you are coming to the cervix and the vagina and all that. Okay. Then the next supports here, still at the middle, is actually the Levator A9, full stop. Levator A9 muscles, full stop. Don't go any further. Then the lower level, we have the perineal membrane. <laughs> if not for the fact that you are tired, I would have made that generate in the morning, but I'll go and sit down and generate it and put on a plate. Okay. So urogenital. Bathroom. So these are the the lances, uh, I mean classification. Okay. So level one is what? What is we are asked? What is the level one the lancet classification? Which which structures actually support the vagina? It's actually the main ones, the cardinal and then the uterosacrum. Okay. Level two, as you as you come down, you meet what the cervix and then the pubic symphysis and then the vagina and what the uh, rectum. Then the levator A9, that is the pelvic diaphragm. The levator A9 is also called the pelvic diaphragm, okay? The level three lower, cry, you have the perineal membrane where the anus is kind of, and then the urogenital membrane, okay? Are we good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so let me see. I think we've done this already, isn't it? Identify A and B and all that. Five complications of the procedure. We've done all this. Then again, anesthesia used for this procedure. We've done it. What are the signs of evacuation? Very long term. And the steps involved in 
processing this for reuse. Okay. All right. Then we've done this. Describe what you see. What's the diagnosis? Why is the abdomen distended and all that? We've done this. Then how will this patient present? We've done it. What sign may be picked up in the female unit? Yes. What sign? Is a bulging, okay? Is a bulging what? Hymen. Yes, the bulging hymen. Because I mean, we should allow uh, the 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 vaginal secretion should actually what come 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 out, okay? It's actually a bulging hymen, the female unit, okay? And then the the what is responsible for the sign of this? What's hydrocorpus? This time it's not blood, please. Because she's exposed to the maternal estrogens, there are a lot of what secretions, right? To hydrocorpus. The condition results because of what? Um, failure of the hymenal uh, membrane to what? To the center to what? Become um, athletic. Canalite. Or canalite, okay? To failure of the middle region of the hymenal membrane to become what atritic or to to actually canalize or to become um opposed um to undergo apoptosis not not a um, atritic please apoptosis that's what i wanted to say failure to canalize all right yes yeah, so we've done this uh so this is what i was talking about you can say so this is the eyes or the wooden spatula right and this is the endocervical cytobrush, the common procedure they are used for past smear, how are the results reported, how do you manage a patient with abnormal results, okay? Then uh, this is, of course, a PCOS, right? You can see the string of pearls. Describe what is the diagnosis, how the patient will present. We've done all these things, long-term present. We've done all these things, right? Good. So identify A and B and then describe the mechanism. Please let me end it because I think it, it's getting long. Let me end this, okay? Because okay. there is something there's something I want to discuss here. That is how would you manage a patient who misses a pill? That one I have to discuss because we have not we've not talked about it. All right. 